The film starts with advertisement for advanced vehicle brand, Monolith. The presenter from the advertisement expresses that the vehicle is granted as the most secure vehicle on the planet and has various unique safety features. He claims that the vehicle is incredibly modern and has a several features like tough glass, solid tires, unbending body, and a lot more to guard its riders from each possible theft and damage. An AI-connected smartphone application is utilized to control every one of the features while being inside the vehicle. A remote assistant called Lilith assists with cooperating with the UI of the vehicle. Next, as we can see a mother conveying her child inside a similar AI vehicle to his granny's house. While discussing with the AI assistant, Lilith, we get to realize that the mother's name is Sandra and her two-year-old child is David. Her husband, Carl, is a pilot who couldn't go along with them because of his busy timetable. The vehicle is advanced that it might detect the heaviness of the passengers inside the vehicle. Afterward, Carl calls them and informs that he is at the central airport after his duty and misses them a lot. All of a sudden, somebody thumps on the door and Carl says his farewell and leaves. Meantime, David begins becoming fastidious so Sandra gives him her cell phone to keep him company. After some time, Sandra takes a stop at a gas station out and about. She then takes David inside the washroom and changes his diapers while some girls are seen laughing. The gas station likewise has a supermarket where Sandra gets her child his favorite snacks. While paying at the counter Sandra sees somebody attempting to break into her vehicle outside. Rather than being stressed, she simply takes out her smartphone and locks the vehicle utilizing the smart app. As Sandra is busy inspecting what is happening, she doesn't see that David has been isolated from her. After she understands that David is lost, she shouts and looks for him around the store. She surges outside and even calls in stranger thinking that David is with him. She appears to be completely gone ballistic until she finds David with similar three women whom she met earlier at the washroom. Sandra quickly places David into her vehicle and enacts the vault mode feature. This withdraws her based on what's going on outside and she last breathes a moan of relief. Subsequent to leaving the gas station, Sandra actually has a long distance to drive until they reach her mother-in-law's house. Because of the long ride, Sandra feels exhausted and chooses to call her cherished friend, Jessa to check of her. Jessa gets the call and informs her that she is close to Central Airport at a hotel. She even lets Jessa know that she has been staying at the hotel with Carl. Sandra is crushed at the disclosure of her friend having an unsanctioned romance with her husband. She turns out to be baffled to such an extent that she doesn't actually try to enter her mother-in-law's house later arriving at the entrance. She keeps calling Carl however he doesn't get furthermore. Pretend to be busy, tired of the lies, Sandra chooses to take matters into her own hands and thus sets her journey to track down Carl at the central airport in Los Angeles. On her way, a board shows that the distance to Los Angeles is around 320 miles. Sooner or later, Lilith, the smart AI, makes reference to that a serious mishap has occurred on the main highway which will slow them down. She then recommends Sandra take the Detour Street, which will save them a lot of time. But, the AI additionally specifies that the route is abandoned and scarcely has any passengers. Sandra, who is determined to go on confronting her husband, doesn't reconsider furthermore, takes the elective route. Afterward, it gets dim and Sandra begins to feel difficult in driving the vehicle. The fog on the way additionally increases, which influences her vision on the road. On her way, she finds no human settlements or some other vehicles. But, she finds an electrical substation located in no place. She looks over the area yet not long drives away. The place is abandoned that the main being present there are wild animals. Unexpectedly, an apprehensive Sandra loses her concentration and collides with a deer which was attempting to cross the road. In view of the crash, David begins crying and like generally, Sandra gives her smartphone to calm him down. She then promptly gets out to check on the animal yet, it seems to be nearly dead. The deer is stuck underneath the front of the vehicle and as a result of it, Sandra can't move her vehicle forward. As Sandra is attempting to sort out the circumstance, she forget to remember that she has left David in the vehicle. In the interim, as David is playing with the smartphone, he coincidentally opens the AI vehicle app. He moves his finger around the open the app and without Sandra's notification, initiated the vault feature of the vehicle. This feature protects the passengers inside from a wide range of unsettling influences and danger. Sandra understands the weightiness of the situation and makes an honest effort to open the door yet it's already too late, as Sandra is locked outside the vehicle. She makes an honest effort to make the two-year-old David switch off the vault mode yet he doesn't understand a word and basically continue to play with the smartphone. Afterward, Sandra panics and starts shouting at the small child, which startles him, and he drops the smartphone under his seat. Here, Sandra becomes more acquainted with that the monolith vehicle's features are not just an advertisement but it also performs in reality. In any event, when Sandra attempts to break the glass with a stone, not a solitary scratch should be visible on the window glass, seeing every one of her efforts go to no end. Sandra chooses to look for other options. She starts strolling back to the electrical substation which she saw previously. After some strolling, she arrives at the station, gets around the fence and shouts out for help, notwithstanding, 
she gets no reaction and the station seemed to be with no workers present at the moment. After this, Sandra goes into one of the rooms and discovers a few fundamental things inside. She takes a flashlight to use around evening time and a big wrench to help her break the glass of the locked vehicle. Similarly as she leaves the substation, she sees a wild animal following her, as Sandra surges back. A coyote goes after her so she climbs onto the top of the vehicle. Regardless of her earnest attempts to scare away the animal, it remains unfazed. In a final desperate effort, Sandra begins banging the vehicle with the wrench and an alert beginnings booming, which at long last makes the coyote withdrew. All of a sudden, Sandra sees David experiencing difficulties in breathing, regardless of, in the circumstance, she figures out how to calm David and he at last beginnings breathing and falls asleep. After a lot of thinking, Sandra also becomes worn out and nods off on the cap of the vehicle. The following day, Sandra awakens when the sun is splendid. She then promptly races to check on David's condition inside the vehicle. She finds David feeble, also, weak as a result of his hungry stomach and drying out. One of the features of the vehicle too, shows the temperature of the surroundings which gives off an impression of being expanding gradually. The condition is a revile to Sandra as the place is totally disconnected without any people around. Sandra then, chooses to look for help and follows the road. In spite of being seriously got dried out, she continues to walk along the road. She likewise knows the dangers of letting David be in the overheated vehicle however she must choose the option to look for help. Luckily, she comes across a river where she drinks and cleans herself, subsequent to acquiring some relief. She proceeds with her journey and experiences steep slopes along the way, subsequent to strolling a few miles. Sandra at last comes across an old airfield, where she finds a jet, in the interim. The temperature inside the monolith vehicle ascends, making it immediately start the emergency cooling fan, subsequent to arriving at the neglected jet, Sandra enters inside and finds a few cocktails, a gallon of fuel, a lighter and a couple of extra plain tires, she drinks some liquor and promptly gathers the important things, from that point forward, Sandra utilizes the fuel to burn the two tires, in order to look for help, she then takes the gallon also, fills it with the water, gradually, Sandra strolls back to where she left David, Sandra rushes to the vehicle and finds David all feeble and becoming red, she attempts call him out, however David doesn't reply or move, the temperature inside the vehicle has expanded essentially and the emergency cooling fans have become inadequate, seeing the condition of her child, Sandra promptly climbs the roof and pours the water she brought from the stream, yet, all her endeavors go into vain, imagining that her child should die inside the high-tech vehicle, she again begins to hit the vehicle window with the wrench however it simply squanders her energy, afterward, Sandra attempts to light a fire outside the vehicle with the expectation that the controls will recognize the smoke and open the windows, however none of this occurs, since, the emergency cooling fans stop rushing to keep the smoke from entering inside, exhausted, Sandra tumbles to the ground what's more, gets a dream of her and Carl visiting a similar incident place after a year, there, she understands her errors regardless to blames Carl for David's death, after some time, she awakens to a few noise and views everything as her dream. To exacerbate things, the coyote from the previous evening again showed up in front of her. Sandra chooses to hide from it and attempts to get on the top of the vehicle. However, as the vehicle's temperature is very high, she can't remain there and rather slides beneath the vehicle. There, the coyote bites her leg and this is when Sandra understands that it is the deer that the coyote is later. When the coyote hauls the deer out, the vehicle begins rolling in reverse. The deer was the explanation which had held the vehicle in the position. Sandra promptly gets free from the vehicle and attempts to stop it from sliding in backwards regardless of her best attempts, the vehicle keeps on rolling in backwards, edging more like a fall, nonetheless, a little chunk of rock hinders the vehicle and it at last stops, as Sandra gazes from the cliff, she recollects the animation she saw before at the gas station, where the diamonds was gotten after the safe was broken, she then considers pushing the vehicle down to open the doors, Sandra is very much aware of the way that her plan may have outcomes however she is left with no other decision and chooses to go with it, she gets the wrench and starts breaking the rock which was obstructed the tire, after effectively eliminating the rock, Sandra intentionally pushes the vehicle down the cliff with David still inside the vehicle, as the vehicle is tossed in the air, its inbuilt AI begins to work and quickly understands that the vehicle is tumbling from a height. The features of the vehicle get to work and move its equilibrium, concentrating on the gravitational tension to fall up standing, without hurting any David. Since the vehicle was designed to deactivate the vault mode at the hour of a mishap to allow the rescuers to come in, the door at last opened. When the vehicle strikes the ground, Sandra goes down the cliff and approaches. The vehicle, in spite of the staggering fall, the vehicle shows up as though somebody just placed it there. Finding the locked door open, Sandra briskly removes David from the vehicle furthermore, opens his clothes to help him with chilling off, seeing David's feeble medical conditions. Sandra sets out to get out the place straight away, before Sandra gets in the vehicle to drive, the entire system gets restarted, with the assistance of Lilith, 
Sandra sets the vehicle into outrageous rough terrain mode and starts climbing the cliff before her, the vehicle gives off an impression of being made for very outrageous circumstances and effectively moves beyond the precarious cliff, supernaturally, Sandra comes to the rough terrain she picked and headed towards the emergency, in the end of the film, we see Sandra also, David shows up at the emergency, David is kept on the emergency bed close to Sandra and is connected with numerous tubes, Sandra appears to be stressed over David until he wakes up furthermore, refers to her as mother interestingly, the film closes as Sandra gets pleased at her child calling her, the end, if you like this story, please subscribe to the channel and like it to motivate me to bring you more stories like this.